Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is modeling and design of CLT panels in RFM 6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Luba Software. For instance, the website, German and English webinars, customer projects, and so on. I will be the moderator today. Uh, Bastian will be the presenter and Gerhard will yeah, together with me, answer your questions, but yeah, the both colleagues can introduce themselves. All right, uh, thank you, Andreas. Yeah, uh, my name is Bastian Kuhn. I'm responsible for the development uh, regarding our timber products, and I'm ha happy to show you our uh, CLT design today. Yeah, hello, my name is Gerhard Rehm. I'm doing more or less the same like Bastian does, so development and customer support. And yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions today. So I'm muted, okay. Thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. For all who participate in such a webinar the first time, uh, I would like to introduce use or describe how to un uh, or yeah ask questions you can show or hide the control panel with that arrow here and then you can enter a short question here and we will answer you if you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many you will get an email afterwards the other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at luba.com to the agenda today Bastian yeah, will something, so say something about the concept of multi-layer surface add-on in CLT design. The main topic is the design of CLT panels, plates, and walls. And the third point is hints for modeling and results evaluation. Then I hand over the screen to Bastian and he can start. So, yeah, thank you. Um, what I want to show you today is actually separated into two smaller models. Um, the first one is based on a customer project, which we will uh, just model from the scratch and design. It's the Brook Common building, so that's 18 stories and 53 meter high. Uh, standing in Vancouver in Canada. Uh, it's just because it's a perfect structure and we will actually uh, design one story of it. Therefore, we directly uh, go into our new program, RFM6, and will create a new position. I don't want to lose too many words about how uh, you arrange models and also we are not doing a theory uh, a theoretical introduction into the design process but okay a few words can be uh, talking about the how it's going to be how the general model is going to be defined and how you can assign it so first of all we give it a name that's a webinar clt 2d plate for example and uh, in the second register we are actually activating the add-ons or what we want to design so what do we want to do we want to need to do today of course we want to def define a clt floor for this for generating the stiffness you would need the add-on multi-layer surfaces it's written in the brackets there, e.g. laminate and CLT. So it's not only for timber, uh, for CLT. It can also be used, for example, for glass um, and several other pro products like uh, yeah, carbon fibers and so on. Wherever you have several layers of material, of any kind of material, uh, lying one over the other and generate a stiffness from it, this is the add-on that you would need uh, in our portfolio um, then 
when you have created the stiffness, generated the model and so on, what I will do now directly with you, in the second step, you would have to design it. And as today we are designing CLT, um, this will be the add-on timber design. So what's possible now in timber design, if you compare it with the older software, RFM5, um, is uh, you can also design beams and surfaces. In the RFM5, the Timber Pro, it was only possible to design beams. So this is now the big advantage in this add-on. And of course, you see it here, it's not ready right now, but when you want to design glass, uh, you would need, need the glass design, additionally to the generation of the stiffness here, the multi-layer surface. Okay, we are not concentrating on load design or creation, that's why we switch that off and jump to the third register standards um, as we want to design for timber, so for CLT, and we are in, in Germany here, I'm using the Eurocode with the timber annex in case I would be designing in America, Canada, uh, Switzerland, or what else, uh, I would have chosen the other uh, standard. Um, I can keep the, the global national annex, but of course there are, for each country in Europe, several national annexes you can choose. Um, in general, what you would, what you are doing with this annexes is that you are, or can assign, deformation coefficients, the KDEF there. So in this case, I'm designing in the moisture class one and therefore use KDEF 0.6, which is already predefined. But in case I want to use another value, I can for sure choose that there. Okay, timber design, it's the same what counts for the load generation and therefore we can uh, skip that uh, now from the explanation. Okay, then we are in the screen of RFEM 6 and directly will define the, the, new, uh, the new thickness. Sorry, I wanted to start with a blank sheet, therefore I wanted to delete thickness and material because I want to show you directly what you have to do. So you, if you go in here and want to define a surface, you at first create a new thickness type here. And because that I have activated the add-on multi-layer surface, you have here a thickness type layers, what we will be using here today. So when you choose that, you see that thickness and so on can no longer be introduced in here, but a second register is opened where you can define layers. Um, there you can also directly go to the material database and choose an autotropic material model and if you go to the library you can see that we already have a few producers there so there's Binderholz, Haslacher, KLH, Züblin with the uh, Ligno itself, uh, Stora Enzo and so on. I will be choosing directly uh, Binderholz with the BBSXL because I want to show you what exactly this is doing in here. Because now I've chosen this material and it took now directly from the database the correct strengths, which the producer, in this example here, Binderholz, gave us, um, especially the verification or the, the strengths for the shear. Uh, stress verifications are something where where you do not have any values from standards. And so then if I had chosen an ordinary C24 material, I did not even have this strength here and would have to uh, assign them. Okay, so now this is predefined and ongoing. It also made a stiffness uh, of 12,000 Newton per square millimeters in the X direction and in the Y direction it is zero. Uh, I said it already, we don't want or we cannot give you today a theoretic introduction into our design, 
Therefore, I will afterwards or during the modeling process, I will show you our homepage where you want to take a look into the manual and we offer also special trainings for that, what I will also want to show you. Uh, but now, uh, just uh, what I say, uh, in X direction, it's 12,000 Newton per square millimeter and in Y direction, for one layer, we have a value of zero. But, yeah, if you know uh, CLT material, it's made of several layers. Let's say in this case, we are taking five layers and you have the, the stiffness in these layers here as well. You know that uh, the middle layers of a five layer plate are always turned around 90 degrees with their stiffness. And therefore, uh, it uh, it is not zero for the whole plate, but it is, uh, the stiffness is zero for one layer. That what is maybe important for uh, graphical reasons. I'm now choosing the same material once again. So go directly back to the database, choose this material here as well, and here, and give it also. A red color because I like the difference between red and blue. So that's here. Here I'm exactly using the same material model. There's no difference in between this. So also the material values, they are the same. It's, as I said, it's just the graphical reason. Yes, you see now that it's red and it also in the rendered material afterwards, it will also be red and blue. Um, yeah, just a personal point. Um, you can also save this setup to a database. So, we, of course, we could use it for the second model that we want to create today. Therefore, we name it now Webinar CLT or whatever name you want. And then later on, we can load it from a template in here. Um, ongoing, what I missed now is the stiffness reduction. Um, because when uh, we are calculating with the shear stiff transfer of the load and because it is like this, we have to reduce the shear stiffness in some parts. So the drilling stiffness K33 and also the in-plane shear strength K88. I will also give you a, a link or show you a link later on where this is described more detailed um, as well. Um, here on the bottom of the third register that has now opened, I have options, especially for CLT design. I could use here uh, glue at narrow sides. The reason for this is that most of the producers are gluing their CLT on the narrow sides, at least for the uh, production process. Um, they do not assign it for the for the stiffness because this is in the values that I just showed you. Uh, the EY you saw, you saw it is uh, still zero there, but they are using a little bit higher shear strengths. But stiffness, because of cracks in the boards, they uh, they are not increasing it or not regarding it. So therefore. In the first model, I will glue it at the narrow sides. And in the second model, I will show you the difference in between what happens when you switch it on or switch it off. Okay, but for now, we're using it glued. Okay, say okay. And one more time, okay. And now we are in the screen, use the origin of uh, zero, zero. Um, and then we want to take it a width of 55 meter and the height of each plate should be 3.5 meter. Of course, it is, uh, I know that it's not possible to produce a 55 meter long board, but uh, there are options to calculate such things also stiff for the rotation. And um, I want to to have uh, several boards with a width of 3.5 meters in the y direction and that's actually where the higher force can or should be regarded um, i'm using the dynamical size of the grid uh, and will now copy it 
the system three times into the y direction with a value of 3.5 meters so then it's here and i want to show you now why i used the rendering in there therefore we switch here to the view screen and then say surface uh so see it no now you cannot see it sorry you we have to go to model solid model surface build including thickness so and now you see that's the only reason why i did that because you can now see each layer in here and it also becomes i think much better visible um how the layers are oriented we have implemented here in the uh, surfaces um a so-called autotropic directions because what the material model that i showed you or i explained you is an autotropic material but if you switch that on you see there's happening nothing you see nothing why is it like this because now the layers are oriented in zero and 90 degrees and if you want to see how they are oriented you have first of all you have to switch off the uh the, re the rendering but then you can see how they are oriented and if you switch the indices on you see that the layers one two three and five are oriented into x direction and the layers two and four are oriented in the y direction so my main stiffness is in global x direction that is what is important in here okay so that's the model i can right now actually switch that off and say now divide these two lines by three nodes um, because these are going to be my uh, stiffening cores in the center so they are made from concrete and i'm just attaching to this now that's how it was assembled in the building in 2017 and then uh, so they have a width of six meter and the second core is at an origin of let me take a look 37 meters i'm not using the exact values from the building there but uh, yeah, just to have it close to the structure that we have in there so this two uh, three nodes i will also just copy one times in minus 1.5 meter say okay and then i have it there and then i will draw a few lines in here and there oops and this one i will be copying via drag and drop onto the right side okay i will connect the lines in here and then it's okay and then a very nice feature is or a very nice function or the feature is if you go right click in here you can divide the surfaces by integrating lines and now you can just delete the surfaces which we do not need okay the facade is uh, running on the outside of the structure and the supports are, lie, are laying in the inside Therefore, we are copying the outer line now about a value of 0.4 meter in the y direction. And this one then also on 13.2 meter as well, also with one copy. Uh, I will take the inner lines and I don't know, before I do that, I have to look for the, the origin of these lines which also works we are the display navigator lines line orientation and now you see that this line is not in the same orientation therefore i will use a uh, reverse line orientation in here and now that i'm just in this dialog i can also take a look if my line axis system is similar of course <laughs> now that i change it it is it is important later on in order to define the slip in between surface number one, two, and so on. I will do that, explain that when I'm doing that. But first of all, for the supports, we want to divide.
the lines in here. Say, okay, the right line uh, distance from the end is 50 centimeter. I uh, still forgot one. Sorry for that. Um, the right line with a distance at the end 0 0.5. Okay, it's not happening again because I have to do it here as well. So, uh, the right distance and then at the start also 50 centimeters. Okay, now this is how the supports will be running and of course that are not enough supports. We need more columns in the structure. Um, we have now also to divide the line by n intermediate nodes and what's also a very nice function in RFM6 or which is uh, yeah has been improved compared to RFM5 is that you can now create a line without dividing it. You could you could do that in RFM5 as well. That's that's not completely true what I'm saying here, but there are more options uh, for it right now. Um, so I'm copying it uh, 11 times, I think. Yep. Uh, 11 times without dividing it. Yeah, that's all. Sorry. Um, okay. Now the structure is uh, nearly there. I have to just interconnect that. Actually, I could, also, it's not really necessary. I could also have left it like this. And for the inner line in here, of course, you also want to have the nodes copied to there. Uh, shift function is deselecting what you do not want to copy. And now I'm doing one copy of a value of minus 3.1 meter and now they are there. Okay, now I, I uh, introduced it already several times now and, and the question is, well, how can I now define a slip in between the structure in here? Um, and that would be done with a line hinge. Um, a line hinge is also improved very good in RFM6. Um, if you remember RFM5, you had to do a lot of line hinges uh, on such a structure. And now it is possible to do it only for one object. But still, you would have to define a, a slip here in. A UX and UY direction and therefore it's the first time I want to jump out a little bit the first time for this presentation what we are doing here today and want to show you well it's a very very simple calculation in Excel based um, and just uh, I just want you to know how I get this value and not yeah grab it from heaven or somewhere um, I'm calculating a slip in between the five, uh, the, the two uh, plates in here based on some very simple equations. You see it here, K there uh, equals uh, the, the, the density, high times height, diameter of the connection, this time screw divided by 23, that's it. And it gives me now for a screw, uh, a value of 2,576. And now what's always important in your design process is actually how much connections per meter you can assign in there. So if you say now in this example three, it will give you a stiffness of 7,729. If you use four, 10,000 and so on. So the equation is very, very simple. You only use this added with this. Okay, that's Sorry for this little excursion, but uh, I wanted, yeah, as I said, not just present it as uh, heaven sent. Um, and if you have this value for the slip modulus, you can go inside our global parameters and name it somehow, in this case, K there. And in unit groups, you already have. Um, a lot of values that you could use and we want to have 
uh, line spring constant, and this gives you this value in here. Okay, and insert, and now it's there. So that is now not really a big step because if you only have this, um, what does it bring you? Because now you design the structure and you find out, okay, three connectors, that's not enough. I need to have four. I need to have it more stiff. Then you always have to jump inside here and have to define it. And also for the, your documentation, the printout report, you have like nothing. So um, how can you improve that? And if you go to, uh, to this info box in here, you see there's the option to insert object properties. Um, and there are now also very, very many options that you can do. Um, but we just want the simplest one of it, line hinges and comment. Say OK. And you see right now, it's a, it's a simple Java uh, script function that I'm using in here. And, but it has an intelligence behind because it already tells me, okay, what you're doing here is an error. It's something wrong. And what is wrong? Okay, I need to tell the software what object I want to assign the comment to. So in this case, that's the object one. I just have to type it here. You see it here in the list on the left side. And I forgot the addition in here. So, and now you see, well, the value is still zero, but I have something in here. Um, in order for my documentation, I'm using this little slice in here. That's just yeah something you need to Google and will find out directly. So if you say, okay, uh, nothing changed, that's a little bit uh, annoying. Why is not sending that value that I want? Because you have to define it here in the comment. And if you see, say three connectors or whatever, if you can also say three screws or whatever, um, it is, act, first of all, this comment is taken to the printout report I will show you after we did the design. And now if you find out during the process, okay, three is not enough, I need to do four, or it has to, just to be stiffer. You can just define it here and it's in real time changed in it. Well, of course, right now I know three is more than enough for this structure because the horizontal load that I'm assigning here today is not that big. But yeah, that's something you will find out always during the design process that you need it. Okay, so then second, we do it also for the Y direction because according to the spring laws, uh, you need to have it in the plate area for X and Y direction. A rotational, Spring constant with newer researches, it is also possible to define a value in here, but right now I'm leaving zero. Of course, you could have something similar like I did it for X and Y direction, also for the rotation. And Z direction is not necessary to define any kind of slip. Okay, I screwed it a little bit up, but it does not matter because I left the dialogue. I did actually not want to do that. Uh, if you jump into types for lines, line hinge, it gives you the uh, or me the opportunity to show you the advantage of it because in RFM5, you would now have to open the dialogue once again and also define the line hinge once again. But as this is an object now here, I do not have to do that and can now do it di uh, correctly and choose the surface and assign it to this line, this line, this line. So wherever I'm assigning it, I'm having or I'm defining a slip. So in between this plate and this plate is defined a slip and this plate and this plate. And now it's missing uh, a slip between this plate and this plate. And yeah, once again, back in RFM5, you would have to define it, the whole stuff once again, but in here, I just can click there and it's absolutely no deal. So that's, to me, a big, big advantage of the new workflow. Okay, it's a little bit small. Um, maybe I will yeah, just increase the size a little bit just to see it in here and go actually in Z direction again. That's now defined and I can define the supports that are presenting 
the columns underneath, they are yeah, very simple. They are just using force in UZ direction and nothing else. Say, OK, OK, and assign it in here and in there and there and there. That's also, to me at least, a little bit small. And we can also maybe yeah, just a little bit increase it. OK. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, in this case, when there's horizontal force, it will just move away. And we need to define the line supports from the core. And that would work via line supports, define or edit the existing ones. And we use actually the same intelligence here, but for local systems. And because we want the force just to be acted in longitudinal direction of the line, I will just uh, release UX with, or just give the slip to UX UI. I will complete the release. That's uh, how I want to do it. And then I I'm using the same like before, uh, using KZR. Do not make the mistake from before. Um, and now if you go in here, it's obviously not line hinge what we want to do now, but line supports. And there also just a simple function comment. You see in here, you can do a whole bunch of stuff in with this. So you can have diagrams with forces coming from other directions than UX and so on. That's all included in here. But yeah, once again, we use the simple simplest one so with line support one point same function like before 0 0.1 and this and no error and then we just type it here say what did we write i forgot it three screws i think and now we have it here yeah works the same way for yeah trust me it is like this um all right three this okay the, but we need to assign it to the lines that uh, I should not forget. Um, so wh where do we want it? There, 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 and there. Choop. And of course, there, 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 and there, there. So uh, the model is now already there. Maybe we want to have some dimensions for it as well, just to have it yeah, a little bit nicer. And maybe we are actually directly starting the printout report because there's all something quite nice in the new RFM6 that I want to show you once we have the dimensioning ready so okay sorry I just yeah maybe you would do it different when you are um making the design of it but for this i think it is now all right and we print this graphic to the printout report because in rfm6 it is possible to have the printout report opened when you uh, are working on the model and yeah we will do that we will maybe use it window filling and uh, maybe not the, well yeah doch. um we take maybe 40 percent of the height save and show ah so ah i did not choose a print, printout report hmm, i don't know actually i should have <laughs> selected the printout report in here ah here so, and it works in the same way like the material database before. You have here templates, what you can choose. Um, and I actually have created one for today's webinar, especially where I selected and deselected a whole bunch of stuff. I think we will now assign it and then go back to the design process. All right, it's generating it. Gives me time to drink a uh, coffee, a small one. Um, okay, now it's there. Um, actually, I could have opened it. Yeah, but so 
uh, I, we're not doing a, a webinar about the printout report today, but of course I want to show you what kind of points you can implement in there for CLT or for timber design in general. Okay, so, but here's now the model and that's it so far. And we go back to the design process and introduce the load, uh, deactivate all dimensions. So, because I don't want to see them any longer uh, and introduce the load. So first of all, we're doing a horizontal force just to have a deformation then in Y direction of one kilonewton per, per meter. Uh, if you have looked for the building, it is standing in most of the highest earthquake areas around the world. So there's probably more force than one kilonewton per meter. Also from wind, there's probably more force. But yeah, just maybe we are in the ground floor here and just have some small force. Um, yeah, we also take a small value in the load case one from self weight and say also okay and have that here and now we define for each plate a life load so this will be five times say okay and now also one of the advantages if you compare it with fm5 and yeah i'm worked long years with fm5 i'm still comparing it uh, but if you are new, you do not have to compare it. Um, in FM5, you would have to uh, define the surface on load case two. Say, okay, leave the dialogue and then choose the second, or in this case, the third load case, assign it there and so on. This is, as you see in here, also no longer necessary. All right, all right. Right, and last but not least, uh, this one, this one, this one. Okay, okay, so we can now also control if we did that all correctly, it's all correctly, and go into the load cases and combinations. Yeah, I said it, we're choosing timber here as a standard group and the design situation, I would just use quasi permanent. The other ones I'm not interested in, and I'm calculating according first order theory and automatically create my combinations for that. And now they are here, say okay. And now I could have start with the design in the add-on timber design because I have activated it in the basic data. But I have to show you the, the objects that you can or should take care on if you once again compare that with fm5 there you have the design add-ons laminate and timber pro and all the things what you have defined in these add-ons are now moved in fm6 into the objects in this case we are designing surfaces and so in here uh, you define it yeah in the surface um first of all if you look for the deflection, um, yeah, you can choose deformed, undeformed system, but that's not what I'm up to. Uh, I want to show you uh, a, a plate is always a little bit problematic when it comes to no clear deformation where you should consider a reference, a reference length too. So the, the distance between this support here on, on my node and this, is actually 4.5 meters, if you remember what I uh, did by copying them. Um, but how do you want to regard it with this other side? Um, and therefore I choose five meters because I'm choosing the difference between this point here and you cannot see it now in here, but the other point there. So to me, that is now on the safe side. And if deformation gives me problems, I anyway would have to do a more detailed deflection analysis. Okay, that's, I hope, explaining it a little bit. Ultimate limit state configurations. We have a combination for ultimate limit state configuration and therefore, of course, we also have to look for the objects. The first two registers are for members and the third one is for surfaces. 
Maybe most interesting for the designer is that now for CLT, it's also possible to consider a system strength factor. So that would be possible in here, and then you could increase it to 1.1, for example. Um, the other ones are not uh, important for surfaces, and therefore I'm not explaining them. Uh, serviceability configurations is also now divided into members and surfaces. You can there just do nothing else than comparing uh, limits or, or defining limits for the comparison of the deformation. I will show that afterwards in the uh, verification. Now, the third configuration is for fire resistance. Once again, the first one is members, the second one is surfaces. Everybody who is, has been working with FM5 is now maybe happy because he say, would think, okay, I have now also verifications for fire resistance in FM6, but it's we're working on that. It's also not far away, but right now um, we are not doing a design of the surface, but we will calculate the burning rate. So the reduced uh, section height of your plate, we will calculate and also give you as a result. And you can, of course, define a lot of stuff in here, and that's already an advantage compared to FM5. But just as a note, the design is not ready for this fire resistance right now. Okay, here you define the service the service class. Usually, it is service class one or two, so dry or moisture. Um, in our case, we have service class one. I think that's probably the most common way for 90% of the structures. Okay, so that's now done. Uh, a nice explanation in first step, I can also just calculate the ultimate limit state because serviceability state, I could design when I'm sure that everything else is working correctly. Actually, you see what I missed here. Here's missing a support there and also there, yeah. Maybe do some checking before we start, but the rest looks great. And I will start the design process and will give you small explanations about uh, how the stiffness is generated in here, what is actually done in there. That's what I wanted to show you um, right away. Okay, that's opening now on the other screen. Ta ta. Um, Hold on. Oh, um, oh, that's uh, confusing me. Ah, I hope you see it now. Can you see it now? Maybe my colleagues can give me, Andreas, can you uh, see now the presentation? Yes. Ah, perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I. Yeah, yeah. If you remember how we introduced the the layers in there, just a small uh, theory, uh, theoretic explanation to that. Uh, we did define a stiffness of E Y, uh, E X and E Y, and also a Poisson's ratio, and of course a shear modulus, and that is now defined in every layer. From each of this layer, we are calculating a, a global stiffness matrix, which is then exported into RFEM. And in RFEM, we calculate deformations, stresses, and inner forces on one plate, not on the whole layers, but on one plate. And these inner forces are then transferred into every layer of it. Um, that's actually the theory behind that. Uh, so let's see if we can get the RFM6 back now, or maybe the homepage back. I don't know. Right now, my screen is a little bit black. Uh, we can take a look. Uh, transfer. Ah, OK. There you go. Well, that's now, uh, I did the webinar in Germany uh, language on Tuesday. There are problems with my screen. I think that's now, that's now based on the 
on the software. <coughs> Sorry, uh, go to webinar. Um, I don't know. Um, okay, this uh, is this. Uh, we can take a look on uh, the results in the RFM6. Hold on. How did we name it? I think it was this one. Yeah. Okay. So you see, uh, we have now an overloading, which is not the desired behavior because we want to be green and, and we want to be smaller than one. Um, but if you look into the details of it, you can see that the overloading is just in a very small spot in here. I can actually switch off the nodal supports. They are uh, not necessary to me here anymore. Uh, there. OK. And so and if you realize that in reality, there's not standing a needle underneath this point in here, but uh, a column with a, with a diameter of something, let's say 40 centimeter or something else, it's obvious that you should not take the force in this spot in here, but you should take the force somewhere outside. And I will actually show you how to do that in the uh, in the literature. You will find this described as a so-called punch-through verification. Um, but before we do that, we go and take a look at first into the verification itself via double click we go into the details of it you see now that in rfm6 we have quite a nice uh, form or equations shown here and they are also filled with values so you have the shear strength shown here um, you have the option to take a look onto the the right the ratio over the section itself or so you see here now these are the, the several layers that we have defined um, you can switch it to stress and take a look into it so sigma x the bending stress you see that there where you have a high stiffness and the high loading you have a higher stress so that can all be compared into here and of course okay we also want to take a look at the shear stress and they are usually in the center of your section that's uh, the same for beams counts for plates as well okay you could also print such things for now maybe not this one but maybe this one into the printout report and um, it's opened on the back so we can just say yeah, take it like this, maybe a smaller height. Uh, actually, that's okay. So we just say okay, and then it's already in the printout report, and I do not have to to take a look on that. We will do that later on. Say close, and or I could have also left it open. It does not really matter. What else is new and possible and quite or very much nicer than it was or has been in the RFM5? If you go to the result navigator here, you can see that first of all, you have now a ratio envelope of all stresses that are in here. You can you have them here and can print them to the protocol direct or use them for your analysis as well. You can separate between several stresses and also between several okay, we just have one layer in here, but lever, several layer sites, for example, top, middle, and bottom. Uh, actually, it was not true here. I can choose the layer. So for shear, you would probably use one of the inner ones, and for bending, you would probably use the outer ones. Um, that's the first nice function. Um, if we jump back to the static analyze itself for the connection design, um, we have uh, first of all when you go to the static analysis you can see there the global deformation and compare it just to get an yeah a feeling of of how is what's going on in here um you could uh, also here for each layer take a look 
at your stresses and also for your strains. That's for some cases quite interesting, I think. Um, and if you just, just let's say, uh, if you compare sigma x on the positive, no, sorry, on the negative side of the surface, you see that there is a value on the top of uh, 3.8 here as a, as a maximum. And if you go to the middle, it actually is quite low, the value. And if you go to the bottom of your section and choose sigma x on the positive side, uh, it gives you the same value as you had for the top side. So that's also something that you could use for your analysis. Ongoing, what I said, uh, first of all, we want to look in static analysis for the connection design. And therefore, we have also op options here. Uh, first of all, the more simple verification of the connection is in the, in the line support, because there we have just a slip defined in X direction. So this is now the force that you need to connect with your connectors in the X direction or in the yeah, longitudinal direction of your line. But also for the line hinge, you can take a look at the force in here. And this is now also the force that you have to assign between this panel and this panel. Um, now let's take a look where the maximum value is. Well, it does not matter. Uh, it is here. Um, it's quite a smooth value and you do not have any singularity effect uh, in the connection itself. But nevertheless, from time to time, you will face this problem. And therefore, here in the result diagram, maybe we will switch to one of the uh, more uh, bigger ratios in here. In the res result diagram, uh, you have to, the option to smooth these values as well. So you can also you say force, normal force. And if you look now for the, the values in here, some way say, okay, 10 meter, 12 meter, that's where I'm ever or where I would be able to average my results. And if you do that in here and say, okay, whoops, start zero and 12 meter, let's say it like this, uh, you see that you have the force that's uh, go has to be attached by connectors, whatever, um, is 9.5 or 0.464 kilonewton. Um, and per meter, you need a force of 0 0.789. So also this is probably something we want to have into the printout report. So we as well will there say, okay, maybe we uh, will not use the full height but something like this should be in there. And uh, we also say, okay, and leave the dialogue. Also this result diagram, I would not need to close. So if you work with two screens, uh, sadly in our presentation tool, we do not have the option to show two screens at the same time, but yeah, this also does not need to be closed. Um, okay, but back to the design um, of the timber. So when you uh, look for that, we still have the overloading in here. How can you get rid of that? It's actually similar to what I showed you with the smoothing of the, of the result diagrams. Um, it's just called differently. It's called uh, insert special object surface results adjustment. This is just for smoothing your result. So now, if we say we have a column of a width of uh, or a diameter of 40 centimeters, it is definitely possible to use a dimension of 60 centimeters. I will show you the reason right away. <coughs> Sorry. Um, okay, I'm choosing all surfaces in here, and I will define it on the origin and press. Okay, uh, not on the origin, but on the first support here so you see it i have not shown the supports now here because i have switched them off but trust me they are there um so this 
and this i'm just using drap and uh what's it called grab and drop oh i forgot it sorry um so then i will copy this areas here uh let me take a look how many times i need to do that uh, i wrote it so 12 times we need to copy it because we do 12 supports in the x direction and by a value not in y but in x direction of 4.5 meters that's the the span we have in here so all right go to that again you see there's the the access system displayed for this we do not need this that's nonsense for our nda virus in here uh, it also makes it uh, not looking that good so we will switch the access system off and now we will calculate it again and as i'm sure that the design process for me is finished now i'm also selecting the sls design to be done and go back to our homepage in order to give you the promised uh, more theoretic um, explanations. So uh, one thing that I missed when I did show you the definition of the layer and the stiffness reduction was an explanation how the factors for K33 and K88H are calculated. And my colleague Gerhard, who's now answering all your questions, uh, we can actually, when, when I did this explanation here, we can take a look if there are some questions we maybe should want to discuss uh, to the audition. Um, so he has a very nice Excel file here, which gives you also the option to calculate uh this values and of course when we have a database uh, for the producers uh, we will also use the factors that the producers are offering us so you do not have to calculate that for all the setups in there um the stress actually i wanted to show you later on that's that's the online manual it's not ready yet. I'm working on it. So there are actually still a few points missing in here. But yeah, what you could have there, for example, some a lot of customers on Tuesday's webinar asked us, is it possible to display the stiffness matrix? You, you, if you remember in the second point, the stiffness matrix for the global plate, um, can I display that? Right now, it's not possible. But you could download on our homepage or on the, in the online manual an, a plugin tool. And if you uh, use that, you, so you still can see the stiffness in this example here. So D11, that's the bending stiffness for this example that we have here in the manual. Um, I also said that we cannot give you a complete um a complete detailed theoretical introduction into the design of clt if you want that we are offering uh, online training you will find it here also on our homepage online training and if you go program version oh no so training type eurocord 5 that's actually the timber uh, this is in march for english 16th of march um this and uh, if you like the building that i showed you here so this this uh, brook common building i did a webinar in september last year where i also showed the whole design process for the complete building and it's so with all stories inside um that's it so now let me take a look if there were questions asked very often. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, there was a question. My, my colleague just showed it to me that probably occurred more often. Uh, and the, the question was why I defined four load cases for uh, the system here. So I, I def for the live load. So I have it on the outer plate and then one of the middle oops oh it's not jumping now it's jumping um just took a little bit of time so uh and here there and then this one here and this one here i said i hope it can be seen correctly uh yeah in 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 here in the theoretic world you would have to define a life load in the first field from this point to this point to this point to this point and then this one should be empty then this one should be loaded and then this one should be empty or this one should be loaded and you need to do it in x direction and in y direction but for the sake of simplification of today's webinar i just use this uh, i only know the german word it's a schachbrett <laughs> loading introduction uh, you can Google that. I don't know. Um, then, um, uh, therefore, I'm just using it in y direction, not in x direction. Because if I would do that also in x direction, uh, I have I don't know 10 or 20 load cases, and the calculation time will just uh, increase. Increase. Um, you can compare it with a continuous beam. Uh, if you have two fields, you also have to introduce the life load on the left side and on the right side because uh, for the middle support the highest uh, force in the middle support will be with uh, life load left side plus life load uh, right side but the highest field moment is with uh, the force on the left side if it is the longer span for example okay so hope that's clear and now we can take a look at the results and then just create a printout report and we are fine uh results good now so the overloading of 1.1 is now changed into a loading of 0 0.8 of course you should make a finer mesh in here so if you look in here you see that the span in here is just smoothening it about this area so but uh, in general, that's how it can be done or how to regard the punching in here and how to avoid this overloading. Um, yeah, I showed you this verifications already. Therefore, I'm not losing too many words on that. Maybe we just go via double click into this verification of the serviceability and also print out uh, print to the printout report. Um, you see, it's the same equations like in the formulas before. And now we go into the multi-editing of printing. Uh, so I already have uh, a model put into the printout report. So I'm not doing this anymore, but I'm using the 40% 40, 40 of the structure. So we do not want to have this, but we maybe want to have all load cases and maybe also the current view of the add-on. Maybe actually, I don't know. It's, uh, it's probably a lot of results. Okay, we can try to to put it in there, and we want to have that window filling. And now we can open the protocol i must see it's somewhere uh, on the other screen uh there it is already i think oops hold on hold on yeah there it is okay now it's uh, loading all the uh, pictures into it you see it on the left side but yeah as i said it has been opened all the time and now it's printing uh, the pictures of the load, the results of the 
lines, the, what else did we put into it? Details um, and stress verification. Well, we can take a look what is in there. Um, yeah, I'm not going into every detail, but into some details. So first of all, yeah, the good point is that for the documentation purposes, you have now the stiffness here and you can write additional text into it. Uh, what was asked for quite often. Here's the model. Here you have the life load, uh, the, the self weight. You have the life load of all these load cases. Um, this result diagram we have in here, it's also quite nice to have for your analysis. Uh, yeah, this diagram is printed in here and also the um, deflection. It. Okay, um, that's the bigger model and I'm now showing you a very small model which only should take about less than 10 minutes, let's say. We name it a wall and say add-on multi-layer timber design as well. It's the same as I did before, nothing to say about that. And we take a very simple structure now, go into this other area and say here once again, we can now choose the material, what we have defined. It's already uh, predefined, but of course, it's also the one what I saved. It's the same material and just take it over. Uh, now stiffness reduction, I want to show you the difference. If you remember before, I only had reduced these factors here, but kept it glued at the narrow sides. Now, if I change that, um, it will actually to, uh, do two additional verifications. And now the last time I have to switch to the, to the homepage and show you the stresses, what I just announced. So if you have glued, at the narrow sides, it will only do the verification of, uh, I don't know if the English word is really thrust cross section. Um, I have to look that up. So, uh, uh, it, but it will then not do the verification of the netto section and also not of the torsion. So if you, if you look in, into these two uh, equations here, you see that the widths, has quite a big influence uh, in all the equations. And now we get back to the program. Uh, it would be possible to also include gaps. So that is also then uh, regarded for the verification. Um, also for this, when we have the producer material databases, we will assign here the widths that the producers are giving us um, in the standard for Austria. It is recommended to use eight centimeters, and but a lot of producers are also calculating with ten centimeters, which is also okay, I would say. So, yeah, default value will be ten, and you as a designer have to say what you are using here. But yeah, I would say if you use ten, you do not do too much wrong in here. So, okay, we make it a wall, um, give it a little opening, yeah, assigned here by this, by this, just to have it symmetric, oops. Um, and in order to see something there with, with the shear problematic, because that's the only reason I'm showing you this example here, uh, we make it quite narrow here on the top. And because it is this, this kind of narrow, I have to refine my FE mesh in order to have at least two elements over the height of this little spandrel in here. Um, we'll define it a support on the left side. Come on. Uh, that, yeah, we'll just clamp around for the torsion just that I do not have to define so much more. And right side I have to define a new nodal support movable in x direction in here tuck 
tuck and also give it some force on the top and the force will be two kilonewton per meter not per square meter per meter and then i also will define a life load maybe the life load has to be introduced on the bottom because yeah usually self weight comes from the roof but a uh, life load comes from the story um, what but and that should definitely be higher than two kilonewtons so let's say 10 kilonewton per meter uh, all right okay do a little combination of course i know you need to do a deflection analysis for this very narrow spandrel in here on top but right now i just concentrate on oops i just concentrate on uh, uls ultimate limit states i'm not inter interested in this kind of deflection now in here of course you could do that and say okay and now i will calculate um okay here these are the design configurations we're also not concentrating on this but just that you saw it um that they are still there um, and now we calculate the results of the timber and now these two additional verifications are done and i can show you the stress uh, that is yeah calculated for this you see quite a lot overloading why is that the case because i forgot to do the smoothing here on the bottom so that's my fault sorry for that um i forgot it um and therefore you go to insert and in this case we are using quite a big one in here and say this 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 and this on that and say okay and then it has of course to delete the results uh at least for the timber design why i drag and drop i would just copy it to the right side and now i only have to calculate the tum uh, the, the timber results um of it again and now yeah it looks ma much better magic and what i wanted to show you so this is the verification we already had before and um, but now additionally we are doing also the verification of failure mechanism two and three i think three is the more interesting verification i don't know um that's really through just my personal feeling um so you see in here in the details that there you have the torsional shear stress of this value and we are also doing additionally uh, shear stress in x and x z direction but you see that yeah the introduction of this is very very low um so the basic point of it definitely is the stress of the torsion okay uh tau tor x that's here of course it's constant over the whole section uh, that's always the case for this kind of stress and here you have it in the netto section which is the failure mode two okay good to me it went worked all nice uh or quite well and i will give the word back to my colleagues i don't know if uh, maybe gerhard also want to say something for often asked questions um or andreas won't just want to wish everybody a nice evening <laughs> thank you okay thank you bastian for your presentation uh, we are a little bit over the time that's why i yeah would not uh, close the webinar immediately. I would like to show my screen again to show you where you can find the recording and the models that we presented on our website, lubal.com under news and events. You can find the webinars. Those are the webinars uh, yeah, in the next time that we are already scheduled or scheduled. And that's today's webinar.
And if you click on it, then you will find the recording here in the next days. And already the models, the both models are already there. But you will get an email with a link to that page, also with your attendee certificate and so on. Okay, and yeah, if you don't use already RFM6, you can download the free trial version, RFM6. It contains all add-ons, also the add-on multi-layer surfaces and the timber design add-on and all other add-ons. And you can use it for 90 days. Okay, then, yeah, maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar, where is a small survey? Yeah, you can answer some questions and you can enter a wish for future webinars and so on. Yeah, uh, you can score us. Yeah, it will take only one minute. It would be very nice if you fill it out. Uh, just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five. Okay, Ben, thank you for your attention. Thanks to Bastian for this nice presentation. Thanks to Gerhard for answering the question. I wish you all a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.